she is kind enough to join us. Here she is, Tatiana Suarez. Hello, Tatiana. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing really well. A uh, lot to talk to you about. Great to talk to you. And by the way, I have to extend commiserations to you. Uh, I have learned through your social media, and I think I know why, that you seem to be a lover of the Buffalo Bills, which I am a lifelong fan of. I do believe it's because <laughs> Patchy is from that area. But I, I, I appreciate the tweets, and I, and I think you were feeling everyone's pain a couple of weeks ago when they got back to the pub. <laughs> is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah. So you've adopted I've them. I've been adopted into the family. Okay. <laughs> is he a lifelong fan? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's from Buffalo, so of course he's going to be a, a fan, you know, because he's like, you know, one of the one of the great things to come from Buffalo. So, yes. and along with the Bills, you know, so very well, cool. I appreciate the tweets very much and the support, uh, and I'm still getting over it. <laughs> what happened a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I know. I literally was in shock because um, the other day, I think there was, it was happening again. I think it was like um, they had kicked the field goal. The night, I think it was like the Niners or something. I yeah. was like, oh, I was like, is this going to happen to them? And then, no, they, they ended up winning. But yes, yes. no, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy. But, uh, but um, yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate, but it's okay. Uh, so obviously next what, year there's always there's next always year. next year Tatiana there's always next year <laughs> and, and you know about uh, that way of life as well and and before we get to the documentary right. can we talk about uh, just very quickly the news uh, we thought we were going to see you in February and uh, unfortunately just given your history like when you hear about an injury I think a lot of fans kind of think of the worst because sometimes we've had extended layoffs with you so could you tell us why you're not right. fighting in Anaheim yeah, so I ended up getting injured um, during practice, literally on my birthday. Oh, it was very, very weird. Just because, like, well, one, you know, I was in, I, I ended up jumping right into camp, and I was feeling good. It was like only a couple weeks into the camp, and um, literally only, two, uh, I was my second week of like really hard training, and then um, it was my birthday, and. Um, I thought to myself, well, I mean, I'm in camp, so it's just like, and it was a Tuesday. My birthday landed on a Tuesday, so it was sparring day, and everything was going well. And then, like with it, like 15 seconds, like I ended up, uh, like hurting my knee and stuff. So, like, um, I, we thought it was gonna be okay. We thought it was gonna just be like a short, like, um, time because it like got swollen, and they're like, oh, it's it'll be okay, you know, by the you know by your fight, and then, um it just never the inflammation just never went down like i had to have my knee drained um and there was like 400 cc's of fluid inside my knee and you're only supposed to have like three wow. cc's of fluid so it was quite a bit and then um they had given me like some stem cells and my knee reacted badly to the stem cells so they're like so then that t took some more time and then i just wasn't able to train at like at all you know i couldn't grapple i couldn't wrestle usually if like i could do one aspect of the sport hard like whether it's just striking or you know what i mean or wrestling or jujitsu like if i could do one aspect of some of, of the sport hard I'll just fight. You know what I mean? Like I, I fought Grasso. My back was bad. I fought her regardless. Like I couldn't, I couldn't uh, wrestle and I couldn't strike, but I could roll hard. So all I did my entire camp was I just rolled really hard and I ended up winning via rear naked choke. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm not like a stranger to like fighting through injuries and stuff like that. But when I can't train at all, like, and go hard, then I just, I won't go through, you know, I won't go into a fight when I can't, can't train hard at all. Like I need to be able to fight. I mean, I train hard in one aspect of the sport and I just couldn't like, even with mid sessions, like I try to do mid sessions hard. I just couldn't, I couldn't go hard during the mid session. My knee would start to like swell up. I could barely move through the inflammation of the knee. Cause it just like, wasn't working properly. So I just was like, you know, I, I told them, I said, Hey, maybe we could just push my fight back a little bit, a couple weeks. I just, I just needed some time so that I could actually train hard, you know? And um, he was like, okay, well, I'll ask him, you know, I'll ask her, but I'm not, you know, we're, I can't expect her to wait, you know? And I was like, I understand. So they asked her and, you know, um, it just didn't end up working out. So um, they just, you know, gave the fight to Mackenzie. So, um, but as long as, she, you know, I'm glad that she has a fight and that she's going to, you know, that she's going to be able to fight. I am, I was really bummed though, just because it was going to be in LA uh, or well, Anaheim. 
Um, and that would be my first time as a, in, in the UFC fighting, like in my, you know, in my home state. So that was, that was definitely a bummer. Cause like a lot of my family was obviously going to make it people that are big fans of mine. were going to come that are from California. Um, we, I mean, we even went to a barbershop somehow Pat went to a barbershop. He makes friends everywhere. So I'm not surprised, but he, he went to a random barbershop here in Covina and they were like, yeah, we're huge fans. We know her brother, her sister. Uh, we're going to go watch her in Anaheim. Oh. Yeah. We both did. We both didn't even have the, we, we both didn't have the heart to tell them. We're like, who's going to tell them? Oh. And we just, neither of us did. <laughs> oh man. That is tough. <laughs> so, yeah i was like oh man i i don't think i could do it i'm like i can't get into this right now. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah so but yeah i just didn't end up happening so but the good thing is that there's nothing actually like anatomically wrong with my knee so that's a good thing but i just didn't want to like go ahead and like try to push through through something that's like wasn't doing what it's you know what i mean like because my knee was really inflamed and I didn't want to try to grapple through something and then actually hurt my knee badly. Cause it is my, it is the knee that I had surgery on. So I just kind of just didn't want to, you know, go ahead and like mess with that, especially cause my actual injury was so severe. Um, cause I, I mean, I tore every ligament in my knee. So it was just like that injury, you know, that injury, I just didn't want to risk. Um, cause you know, um, I have cadavers and they're not my actual ligament. So it's like, I just wanted to, you know, I didn't want to do something like kind of like similar to like the Nina Ansaroff thing where I pushed through the injury. I went and fought and then it got worse in the fight. And then I had to be out for a couple of sure. years. Like I just didn't want that to happen to me again. I learned my lesson the first time and I was like, I'm not going to do that. But if it was something where I could train and just, you know, go hard, I would have just fought with it. You know what I mean? But it's just, it just wasn't working out for me. I mean, we tried everything. I mean, I was at the, I'm at the PI. So it's like, I, you know, I was there every day and we tried everything that we could. So, um, they just thought it would be best. I mean, we all thought we all agreed like the physical therapist and everything, everybody agreed that we just should not, um, fight and maybe postpone it a couple of weeks. So I had told them, you know, um, in advance and then they just couldn't make it happen. So here we are, but it's okay. I think, Either way, it's going to, you know, I'll be able to fight soon. What are they um, saying? What, what, and, what's the timetable of when you could fight again? Um. Well, I'm training. I'm just not going live yet. So um, I think I should be able to go live within a few more weeks. It's just still like literally it's still inflamed. So it doesn't bend all the way. So when I'm like, I tried to do like jujitsu drills yesterday and it was like, being weird. I felt like I was 10,000 years old. I'm like, okay, maybe it just needs like another week or two, you know, but I think it, I don't think it should be that much longer. So I'm, we're going to continue training. We're here in California because we did our, you know, that premiere. Yeah. Um, but we're training really hard here. We're hitting mitts every single day and like Pat's getting his, you know, work in. So, um, we're both, re we're both working really hard and getting better. So, um, can regardless, we just skip, can we just skip um, the contender ready. stuff? Like, can we just go straight to the, what are we waiting for at this point? Like enough already. Uh, let's just go straight. You, you get the winner <laughs> of Zhang Weili and Yan Xiaonan. There it is in April. Have you sitting cage side? No one needs to see anything more. I, I feel like it's time. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, you know, Ariel, I, I thought I was going to be able to, you know, fight for the title, you know, uh, Jan got the title shot, but you know, I wouldn't even have minded if we, me and her fought for it, you know, and I was trying to get that fight. They didn't want to, they, they were trying to get that fight done in October. So she could fight in like January and that never even happened. So I'm like, why couldn't they have just given me a little bit more time? Cause I, they were trying to push me to fight a five round fight within like four weeks or something instead of giving me a proper amount of time to train for a five round fight, you know? So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And, uh, I wanted to fight. I just said, Hey, just give me a couple more weeks, you know, cause I want a sufficient amount of time to fight. I'll fight anybody, um, in the world, uh, while I have time, you know, when, if I train properly, cause the last thing I ever want to do is go into the cage and I didn't train hard enough or I didn't train enough or, and then I think to myself, you know, uh, Tatiana Suarez versus Zhang Weili is one of the best title fights we could possibly get. Hello, I'm Tatiana. So sorry. No problem. You all right? Did I'm he... so sorry. Somebody called me and then like they kept calling over and over. I hope it's not USADA. Oh, no. No, USADA's gone. <laughs> They're gone. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but whoever is whatever, like, whatever, there's yeah, still yeah. new, there's still new people that are like, yes. uh, yeah, but um, yeah, no. So I just, uh, and then they end up doing it in April. I'm like, I could have fought her. Like, yeah. I could have fought her plenty of times. Like, you know, they were trying to rush everything, the timeline and everything. And I'm like, I could have fought her anyways. And then I, you know, we'd be fighting. I'd be fighting on UFC 300. Yes. Anyway, you do have exciting things going on. Uh, let us talk about that tonight. Your documentary uh, on your life, on everything you've overcome, premieres on Max, The Unbreakable, Tatiana Suarez. Could I ask, when you were first approached, and I believe it was by Cassius, who has done a lot of great work throughout his uh, career as well, about doing this, knowing you l a little bit, and knowing that maybe sometimes you don't love putting yourself out there and doing media and stuff, here you are, and your family <laughs> sitting down talking. What made you think that? Yeah, I Ariel. was like, man, I can't imagine how tough this was on Cassius to get you to sit down to open up uh, the way <laughs> someone should on a doc. Talking about some heavy duty stuff. What was your initial thought when you were approached about doing this? How did it all go down? Um. Well, I think uh, you know. At first, he just kind of was like, I, I, you know, I read about your story. I just think it's a great story. And then, you know, as time went on, the story just kept continuing. So it just kind of was like a crazy thing. You know, he just uh, he wanted to write us originally. He just wanted to write the story about you know, like overcoming cancer and all this other stuff. And then things kept happening to me, and it just became an even more um, inspiring story. And then, you know, we just kind of. Um, you know, he's, uh, you know, like family to, to us now, you know, cause he's been around for so long. So my family, you know, they, they love him for, you know, coming in and trying to tell my story the way, you know, um, the best that he can, you know, and I think he did a great job of it. So, um, I think, you know, we all watched it, um, and, you know, it meant a lot because everybody that, you know, loves and cares about me was there at the premiere and, they were able to watch it and, um, and it even made my grandma cry. Wow. <laughs> Is she a tough I one? I have never seen my, she's a tough yeah, one my to grandma, break. I've okay. never, I've never seen my grandma cry before. And, um, I was like, you cried grandma. And she's like, yeah, I cried. And I was like, and then I was like, really? And she's like, I cry. I'm like, uh, when, <laughs> when have you, I've never seen you cry. And she's like, I cry I'm like when she's like you know sad stuff I'm like what sad stuff I've never seen you ever cry like <laughs> well, but there's a great there's a great obviously uh story here and 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 it's about triumph and overcoming tribulations and whatnot and so uh if we can I, I'd like to bring in Cassius to talk a bit about the process because I'm fascinated about this sort of thing and so he is kind enough to join us right now we're going to say hello to him there he is the great Cassius Corgan who was in our studio uh several several months ago uh, and thank you for including me. Uh, I didn't think that I was, uh, you know, worthy of being a part of this story because Tatiana and I have had a love-hate relationship where sometimes she doesn't reply to my text for like 14 months. But here I am in the documentary. It's a lovely, lovely thing. Thank you for joining us, Cassius. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me on. I've been watching religiously since uh, 2000, late 2015. So it's pretty cool to to be on the show and and to be on the show with Tatiana, you know, who we've gone on this crazy journey together. So before, just quickly before we start, Ariel, I want to thank you for what you did in the documentary. As everyone will see, um, you really helped contextualize Tatiana's story in a way that not only illustrated her significance within the sport and how unique her story is, but made it accessible for people who aren't huge MMA fans. So just before we start, thank you for that. Of course. Anything for Tatiana. Of course. It was my pleasure. Also, Cash, just let him know. It's not even personal. I just am not good with Tatiana. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So actually, that was my first question to you, Cash. Just how hard yeah. was it to get Tatiana to be a part of this, to sit down. You know, a documentary yeah. isn't an interview like this. This is months and months and months of working together and, and falling in. How, how difficult was the process, if you can share with us? <laughs> yeah, so this has been, <laughs> this has been a, it's been a four and a half year journey, uh, wow. actually, since uh, Tati and I first got started. And there were, for the first four years, I'd say, I really thought I was like, damn, she doesn't like me she's like really not interested in participating in the documentary and then i when i finally asked chris who i know is like the person she looks up to the most her and her and um, chris and her mom lisa are probably the two people she's closest to aside patchy um i was like yo does she is this like have i done something wrong like what did i do and he's like dude she doesn't answer text period like 
if you get her on the phone, like get everything you need on that call. Cause if you're expecting to get an answer with text, like you're in a bad spot. Okay. You know? so, <laughs> it's not personal. <laughs> why is this Tatiana? Why, why are you like this? I don't really like to be on my phone like a lot. Like okay. I don't like to be, I don't really do social media that much. Like if I do, it's to post fun th- something funny, but I don't, I just don't like being on my phone. I like to be like present in the moment. Okay. Fair enough. Totally. Uh, respectable. Um, you really opened up in a big way. And again, you, you've told us about parts of your life throughout your career. And, uh, I know those who follow you closely know some of this, but you, you tell it all here. This is the, the, the closest we've ever gotten to knowing the true you and what you've had to overcome. How difficult was that for you, Tatiana? Um, it definitely was difficult. Um, just because I'm a private person to begin with, so, um, it was definitely very difficult for me, but, um, you know, I think that my biggest thing in life in general, um, is just, that I just want to inspire as many people while I'm here. Um, you know, I think like I've always inspired people in my field, like say younger girls, just by doing what I know how to do best. And that's just train and put everything I have into the sports that I love like wrestling and now I'm a man. So I've always led by example. Um, and I've never, you know, I'm not much of like, I'm not going to give you a speech, but I'll just, anybody can just watch me and see how hard I work and, and be inspired by me. Um, so this is like a different, different thing for me having to speak about, you know, um, about things, about my personal life, about going through the personal struggles that I've gone through and my mindset during those times, um, just because I, I I don't really like the spotlight of things. And I think, you know, um, it's hard for the spotlight to be on me, even though I am in a sport where I literally entertain people by fighting. So, uh, but yeah, so I think this was very hard for me, especially because it is my family and my personal life and stuff like that. Um, but my, my family was also very transparent too. So I think, that having their support and love and um, people that love me supporting me, you know, I think like I would, I'd go and I'd have like an interview with Cassius and then I'd go to Pat and he'd be like, it's okay. You know, you're going to inspire a lot of people. Um, so having the support of people like my mom, Pat, my brother, um, that was very helpful, you know? So. Mm. Uh, Cassius, uh, <clears throat> one thing that fascinates me, and I don't know if I told you this um, way back before I started any of this, I worked at HBO sports and I worked in their documentary department and I know the type of things that they've aired, right? The kind of docs that they've produced, bought, etc. This one is not like those docs. A lot of those are ones uh, about stories that happened 20 years ago or about a right. profile on a athlete who retired long ago, not someone who's in the midst of their career. How hard was it to get Correct. HBO to, uh, to get on board with this documentary? Um, well, thank you for pointing that out, Ariel. Uh, this is a boundary-breaking documentary. It's the first time HBO's made a documentary about a Latina athlete. Um, and when I first uh, had the opportunity to share um, the project with them, that was a huge focal point. I think there are two things that really differentiate Tatiana's story. Um, there's a whole generation of MMA fans that have come in post-COVID that really aren't familiar with Tatiana. They don't know who she is or why she's special. And it's, I think, the enormity of the insane sequence of obstacles that she's gone through her life, which I'd love to just touch on briefly if you'd sure, you sure. be cool with that. Um, before I get into the rest of the answer, Tatiana started wrestling as a three-year-old when girls didn't wrestle. So she was wrestling against boys starting at three years old. Uh, by the time she was in eighth grade, she was the boys' state champion in California in wrestling. <laughs> in high school, she was a 12-time national champion, meaning she was the national champion every year in three different divisions. Uh, she was the first Latina on Team USA, the Olympic wrestling team. And leading up to the 2012 Olympics, Tatiana was considered by many, including Terry Steiner, the head coach of the U.S. Olympic uh, women's wrestling team, who we interviewed in the doc, to be more or less the future of Team USA. She was ahead of Helen Maroulis on the depth chart. Um, Helen went on to become a multiple-time Olympic gold medalist, which is a crazy theme in Tatiana's journey, as you were mentioning earlier, Ariel. How, what does somebody have to do to earn a title shot? How many world champions does someone have to dominate to earn a title shot? Um, right before the Olympics, suffers an unimaginable neck injury. Uh, 
temporarily uh, paralyzed, in fact. And when they were trying to figure out what happened to Tatiana's neck and they did an MRI, they discovered a mass in her thyroid that totally unrelated to her catastrophic neck injury turned out to be thyroid cancer. She had to get her entire thyroid and parts of her um, lymph nodes removed and was in a, at, ni- at 19, 20 years old, had her entire life and identity taken from her. And when I first discovered her story, I saw on her Wikipedia was like three sentences at the time. It, it, it had that line right before the Olympics, suffered a broken neck and discovered that she had cancer. Then it said four years later, she started fighting in MMA and won the ultimate fighter. That alone was how I was sort of introduced to her story. And I was like, that's a, that w- what happened in those four years? That's a documentary. That's a movie. Like there's something incredible there. And only when I started getting to know Tatiana did I discover all these other layers to the story. Um, and I think, Ariel, as you've seen the doc, that's really what stands out. It's not just the Rocky story that she's had. It's not just that unimaginable double whammy of a broken neck and cancer. And now this second mega comeback from re-injuring her neck against Nina, which is when Tatiana and I first started working together, um, to then on, you know, on her comeback, blowing out her entire knee before um, her comeback about a year and a half ago. But it's everything that led into it. She pioneered the sport of girls wrestling, and she comes from a single parent home with uh, an incredibly difficult childhood and family story where her mom gave birth to her older brother at 15 years old and had to figure out how to give her kids a better life and more opportunities. And the bravery that Tatiana and her family showed in opening up about the challenges they went through living in a mobile home um, in a trailer park outside of Covina, California, um, and the mistakes that they made and the way that they have grown together as a family is what elevates it for me beyond a sports doc to really being a testament to what we're capable of individually and what families are able to get through and come together. So um, that's a long-winded answer uh, to give you context for how I pitched it to HBO. And they really saw the opportunity to use her sports story as a Trojan horse, if you will, um, into a really deep and universal human story. And um, it's just been an unbelievable honor and privilege to be able to tell Tatiana's story and also make the first MMA documentary on HBO, which, you know, the home of the Tiger Woods doc, the home of Muhammad Ali, the home of Maradona, like these guys make docs about icons and Tatiana is well on her way to that icon status. That is incredible. Uh, great answer. And I appreciate that perspective. The audience does as well. The, the, the name of the documentary, the, the title is the unbreakable Tatiana Suarez. In closing, Tatiana, can I ask you, at any point, did you feel broken? All those things that Cassius just went through, did you ever feel like you were actually broken? Um, I felt sorry for myself after the knee injury, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it took like a few days, and then I was like, then if you had seen, if you just look at my Instagram, you kind of tell when I just said, uh, I'm I'm, going to be okay, and that's when I did a workout with uh, one leg and I did it on the Airdyne, work, Airdyne uh, bike. And I was like, okay, this is my first steps to become, you know, to my comeback. So I decided then and there that that was, you know, I was going to continue my comeback. Um, here I am. I'm still doing it, but I've won two fights since then. <laughs> yes. And you won the uh, Comeback Fighter of the Year award on this uh, very show. So, by the way, congratulations. I know it's the greatest honor of your career. Let's go. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on that uh, distinction. Congratulations to the both of you. Uh, I have seen it. It's tremendous. It's well worth a watch if you haven't. If you're one of the uh, regular folks out there who haven't, watch it tonight on Max, 9 p.m., and then, of course, on demand anytime afterwards, right? Uh, did I get that correct, Cassius? Perfectly. All right. Perfect. Congrats, guys. Thank you so much. And Thank great job. Thank you so much. Well done. All right. Take care. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.